how to complete year-end bookkeeping closeout. If this is something that you're working on, this video is for you. Come check it out. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Cece Crosley. I am the owner and founder of Bookkeeper Bootcamp. Uh, this channel I have created to uh, help with tips, tricks, tools, and hacks for virtual bookkeepers, hybrid bookkeepers that are either beginning and just starting their career, or for you that are veterans in this bookkeeping journey. This channel is for you. I've got 20 plus years of experience as an accountant and bookkeeper. I've, got, I've gone along with a lot of the upcoming trends of becoming a virtual bookkeeper and what that looks like in this new world. Um, basically, I'm here for all of you. I'm here for myself too, because I definitely need to hold myself accountable. And that kind of goes in hand in hand with why I'm making this video. This video is because I've been helping a lot of my students with year-end bookkeeping closing, and I'm doing that right now myself. So for the year of 2022, it's coming to an end. We're already working on year-end bookkeeping closeouts. So if this is something you're interested in and you're working on, stay tuned because that's what we're talking about. Um, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, like, all the fun things. You guys can even catch me um, on a daily at uh, Bookkeeper Bootcamp at um, Instagram, at Bookkeeper Bootcamp on TikTok. And uh, if you guys ever need to get a hold of me or chat, definitely shoot me a comment down below or an email at bookkeeperbootcamp at gmail.com. So let's get to it. All right. So bookkeeping year end closing out, right? Um, for those of you that are using QuickBooks, you guys might already see that um, there's a bookkeeping close like action and button. Let me explain real quick what that means in QuickBooks. That just means that any transactions previous to the closing date will not be able to be um, edited or, or change it in any sort of way. So that's what that means. It's just the locking of transactions, all right? And that's really all it does. It does nothing else except lock transactions so that nothing can be edited without a password by whoever is in charge of your bookkeeping. So that's what that close out detail and um, setting really means in QuickBooks. So beyond that, what we're doing right now for 2022 and things that I'm working with with my bookkeeping clients and with the students that I'm working with that I help coach and mentor, all of those people are still working in their clients' books and working on their year-end close. So what does that look like? The first recommendation that I talk about is preparing a um, closing schedule or a year-end closing schedule. So I've already compiled a list of all the things that need to be done for cleanup. I'm um, not cleanup, I'm sorry. <laughs> Obviously, I do too much cleanup, cleanup on the brain. But uh, what I mean is <laughs> bookkeeping closing. And uh, down below in the description, if you are looking for just the list, it is in the descriptions below, so click on that and you guys can get a free list of my year-end closeouts. And uh, if you guys have any questions and you guys wanna maybe chat with me about it, because it might be a lot, it is a lot, and it is pretty detailed. Um, I pick and choose as needed per industry, but you guys can always jump on a free 20-minute call with me. Just click on my um, link tree to get to that. Anyway, uh, preparing the closing schedule is prepared is basically preparing the list of things that I need to do, which is the list I'm rec which I, I just talked about, right? And on that list, I have um, actions that need to be completed for the entire year. I already have something similar for my month end that I will be doing throughout the year, and I provide this to uh, that's free as well. So definitely check out the links in the description below. It's gonna have everything I'm talking about, okay? So that way I don't have to keep boring you guys saying check out the links down below. It'll be there, it'll be there. So I'm already checking a lot of the simple things when it comes to, and I don't wanna say simple, but I'm checking off a lot of the listing things to make sure that my bookkeeping is accurate and um, moving forward, I don't have to do too much of a cleanup when it comes to year end. Um, and I'm not doing too many adjusting schedules or adjusting journal entries. And uh, this closing schedule, what it does is it is setting completion dates to make sure me and my team are finishing out each client's books accordingly. Now, there are some things that can be done before the end of the year, and there are some things that can be done after the end of the year, like reconciliation. So we're not gonna completely finish the books and um, finish closing the books until after we do the reconciliation of everything but we can at least prepare the schedule, which is important, so that we can be on target with 
making sure our deadline doesn't get pushed too far back, right? Because it's the holiday season. So from like Christmas to New Year's, it's really just one big blur, nobody wants to work, and I get it. Take the vacations and take time to spend with your family. That's really important, because guys, from one bookkeeper to another bookkeeper, it is tax season, hit January. That means books need to be clean, they need to be in order, and you guys are doing this closing. So aside from preparing the schedule, making sure that we've got the dates in place, we're also going to be, second step is going to be reviewing your assets. How I like to do it is I'm just gonna review my bookkeeping, I'm not my bookkeeping, my balance sheet from top to bottom. So obviously starting with the assets. I'm gonna review my assets, meaning I'm going to be, of course, making sure that all the assets are reconciled, which are meaning the cash accounts. So whether it's cash, checking savings, maybe a PayPal that's um, associated with that, QuickBooks checking accounts, some clients are utilizing that checking account that QuickBooks provides. So making sure that all of these things are reconciled and reconciled correctly um how i like to explain reconciling correctly it is on the the list you basically want to make sure that the ending balance on your statement matches the balance sheet for the same dates that are on the bank statement so for instance if i'm running um the bank statement for january and on the bank statement for january it says january 1st through the 29th then on my ba balance sheet i'm running the first through the 29th to double check that the ending balance on my bank statement matches that same number that's showing up on my balance sheet for those exact same dates. Now, for whatever reason, should those numbers not be correct, I need to either A, have an explanation, or B, fix it. And a good explanation example is if you have a client that cuts checks at the end of the month that don't get cashed to the following month. So you're accruing for those checks. That's a good explanation. You guys can either have that explanation or do the accruals month in and month out so you guys can see those numbers agree. Um, what I like to do is I like to make sure that those numbers agree for every asset account for the entire year um, until, until where I'm at right now, which is what? November. I can't really do December because I haven't gotten December statement yet. So it's important that those numbers are making sense, that they match. That means that there are no duplicate transactions. That is the goal here when we're reconciling is that we're trying to make sure that there are no duplicate transactions. And by matching those um, numbers, you're making sure that there aren't those duplicates. If there are duplicate, either deposits or expenses, that's what's going to possibly if I'm not, it is going to throw off your balance sheet matching your bank ending statement, bank statement ending balance. Whew, geez, such tongue twisters today. But that's what I'm trying to do. If you have more questions about it, let me know, shoot me an email. It does get a little convoluted when it comes to um, certain things that come in and out as far as accruals. So you guys might need some help with that. Shoot me a comment down below. I can definitely do a video um, and or just shoot me an email. All right, so um, after you're done doing all of the asset uh, checking and making sure that they are um, reconciled correctly, uh, you're going to record any adjusting journal entries. And adjusting journal entries, right? This is still part of number two, is uh, reviewing the asset accounts. What is a journal entry? What is an adjusting journal entry? Not a journal entry. Most of you might already know what a journal entry is. And I'm gonna take my little paper in front of me, so don't kill me because I did write this out so that way I can kind of give you guys a more, I don't know, a more hands-on term, a more layman term on what adjusting journal entry means versus what's you know easily Googled. So what's an adjusting journal entry? They're journal entries that are made at the end of a reporting period. and um, it could also be the beginning of a reporting period if necessary. Uh, so it's to reflect unrecognized transactions, meaning like you could have, for instance, um, accrued expenses, meaning that, um, that the, let me see, hold on, that the, that the, um, it's been a long day. Don't criticize me. Okay. So accrued expenses, meaning money that the company should be spending, but hasn't been received or recorded uh, or recorded yet as a bill. Sorry, I lost my place. Forgive me. It's been a long day. Um, so I like to make sure that anything that's reoccurring or like utility bills or bills that just haven't been entered yet, maybe because 
AP is catching up because we have lots of AP, we're accruing for those expenses, meaning that the revenue is being spent or has been spent. It's just we um, we haven't recognized it yet in our in our system. So that that right there is like services products uh, still not paid or um, just like not pay like we've received them. So that would be the accrued expenses side, meaning the expenses recognized, cash is not paid. There, I'm gonna write that right there. Accrued expenses is, is, is an expense that is recognized in QuickBooks um, and the cash is paid. Gosh, <laughs> it's, it's year end, I'm telling you. This is real life, year end right now, year end CC that you guys are getting. Uh, another example of, of an adjusting journal entry is um, the the accrued revenues, so where service and product was provided and still not paid, also known as unearned revenue. So some of you that have been taking my bookkeeper bootcamp for beginners, this is something I absolutely go over. It's revenue uh, is recognized and cash is received late. Uh, sorry, revenue is is recognized, but and the cash has been received, so that's unearned revenue. And uh, I, what was it? The cash is received later. Revenue is recognized. Oh, I wrote this down. Revenue is recognized and cash was received later. So in that sense, accruing revenue. So revenue is being recognized and we're going to receive the cash later, meaning that we've provided the services or the product, either ourselves or our clients, and we haven't been paid for it yet. Whew, hopefully I didn't lose you guys there. But uh, those adjusting journal entries, they need to be added to your um, accounts, like your AP. Um, and your AP would be your liabilities, but your AR would be one of the asset accounts that you guys need to account for. I also take this opportunity to look at that accounts receivable to um, pull the AR, AR aging summary report to make sure that anything that is overdue, either we're setting up a payment plan or I'm figuring out what's happened. Either it got paid and we recorded it wrong, so it needs to be cleaned up and fixed, which should have been, again, this is something that it should be monitored through the months. This is part of my monthly, um, my monthly month end checklist. So by the time it comes to the year end, I really shouldn't have so much to do. But in the sense that I need to do any adjusting journal entries, for say an AP or an, a, um, an AR account, this is when I'm doing them. I'm trying to take in, into account that we're going we might need to bring it into next year. So when I run the numbers for next year, I need to make sure I run the numbers and close the books out and make sure that the balance sheet reads off correctly, that anything that is accrued to earn next year will be accrued to earn next year. Make sense? Again, if you guys get stuck on that, accruals are probably the more stickier part for some beginners, even for some of my vets out there. You know, it's one of those weird situations. And again, not all industries are the same. So remember that. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay, we're still on number two, which is re reviewing the assets. Another asset account that you guys need to review is the inventory account, right? For those of you that have inventory clients, um, some of you that have the service clients, you guys don't have to worry about this, so you can skip over. But the inventory is where you're gonna compare the physical count of their inventory to the number that you have in QuickBooks for the same inventory, okay? And then making your adjusting journal entries to compensate if the numbers don't agree. So if the numbers don't agree, you guys can move it over to shrinkage, right? And shrinkage, spoilage, things like that. That's where that account, the shrinkage account, really comes in handy because Items get damaged, they get spoiled, um, they get returned, broken, used, whatever have you. So taking a look at the inventory account, which is an asset account, making sure that you guys um, have those year-end numbers properly updated and those year-end prices properly updated. All right, so the next asset review is the assets that belong to the company. Right, that's gonna be any big assets like um, if you've got vehicles, if you've got big equipment, um, any big assets like that that actually are you know, pieces of furniture or pieces of big software, you know what I'm talking about. Some industries have really big assets, some don't. Maybe, uh, maybe like a hairstylist might have you know, a lot of 
big hair dryers and a whole thing of assets that belong to her that need to be depreciated. Some, some people might actually have property that needs to be depreciated. So we're going to look at all of these other asset accounts and making sure if it's something that needs to be uh, depreciated, that we're working with our CPA or tax pro or accountant of some sort to make sure that either we or they are taking over the depreciation assets um, account and making sure that those numbers match up. So you as a bookkeeper, what I would say is if you're not familiar with depreciation and you just feel uncomfortable, reach out to a tax pro. Um, if you guys need help with finding tax pros, shoot me an email and I will connect you with some tax pro friends. Simple as that, okay? Until I find something other than, <laughs> than that. If you need a tax pro, let me know. I might have some readily available for you guys, okay? Um, so with uh, the depreciation, making sure that you guys are taking care of those assets, um, that is really important. And some, uh, I want to say some assets, if you have any questions, again, just get with your sales, uh, your, not sales tax, your tax pro, clearly I've been working on sales tax, or your CPA, and then they can give you guys a hand with that. All right. So that concludes all of the reviewing of the assets, all right? So that was just the conclusion of number two <laughs> on my list of things that you guys should be checking out as far as getting your year-end closing done. And it is important to do this step because um, making sure the assets are reviewed and up-to-date, it determines the value of the company or the company's current assets. So making sure that the company's current assets and the value of them are correct, that's gonna be really important to paying taxes because if I'm not wrong, uh, they're gonna be paying taxes on uh, assets here. So let's make sure that our bookkeeping's correct. And that's the goal here is to make sure that they are so that our client's uh, tax liability payments are close to zero as they can be. So this is the end of my very short part one video. Be sure to check out my part two video on the year-end bookkeeping close because there's just so much to talk about. I'm going to talk your ears off. Um, for any questions or comments based on uh, what we talked about today, make sure you guys drop a comment down below or shoot me an email at bookkeeperbootcamp at gmail.com. Uh, I do have a link tree that's got information about upcoming classes, both internationally and uh, both for just learning new book uh, for bookkeepers that are learning. Uh, that want to learn more about bookkeeping that have zero or little experience or for some of my veteran bookkeepers out there that need a little more support that are overqualified for <laughs> bookkeeper bootcamp OG, you know, beginner camp. Uh, we have a little bit of everything. So this year is all about support and I'm definitely trying to make sure that we are here for you as a company. I'm here for you as a friend and a bookkeeper. So have a great and safe holiday and I'll catch you guys in part number two.